Hello and welcome to Backup and Restore with Parallels Plesk 11.5. I'm Jervis Lewis and I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. So let's get a quick overview of what we're actually doing here today. First of all we have a website. A box standard WordPress installation with not much content on it and we're going to back this website up. Then we're going to make some changes to the website and after having made those changes we're going to restore the backup that we've previously made which will then wipe out those changes and bring our website back to uh, before we've started fiddling with it. For this example we're going to be using a standard WordPress installation with WordPress 3.6.1 and I'm going to be using a Plesk 11.5. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why we'd want to do this. So uh, one of them of course is data security and data safety. So no matter how hard I try and protect your data if something goes terribly terribly wrong and I won't be able to restore your data for you then it is your responsibility to have a backup that you can restore yourself and uh, it also puts uh, control into your own hands in case you want to go with a different host or um, something else you always have a local backup uh, of your data so it's very important to have that at hand um, safety security and uh, the other point is that with things like WordPress, you may want to think about archived snapshots. So things like, what did my website look like six months ago or a year ago, any given point in time. If you have a backup of your website, then you can always bring it back to that point and say, well, what, what did it actually look like two years ago? And the third point is that during website development, you may want to do something like a, a version control, something like a, like a poor man's version control. Software developers use this when they've, uh, when they've brought their project to a certain point and they're about to make a scary change that could potentially break the entire project then uh, quickly beforehand they they put something in like a like a restore point from which they can bring their project back and that's we can use um, backup and restore exactly for that so in case of a WordPress website when you're working on it and you think you know this is kind of pretty much to the air now content wise but I'm about to install a plugin that I've never tried out and I don't want the website to completely break then uh, just make a quick manual backup um, and if something majorly goes wrong you can always uh, restore it from the backup and say hey nothing's nothing's happened now I'm going to show you exactly how to do that now with Plesk uh, at the, with the example of a WordPress website so without further ado let's get started doing the backup so right here I have a website. It's a standard WordPress installation and I'm using the 2013 theme. So this has got the orange header here and I've only got put one post in the picture post, a 3D rendering of a coronet. Very nice. Other than that it's exactly um, as the standard install looks like. I'm calling it old website and this is the state of the site before restoring a backup because that's what we're going to change in a minute. So this is the front end of the website, here's the back end, that's what I'm going to be making those changes to WordPress. And here is the uh, Plesk 11.5 login panel. So let me just log myself in here. And when I do that I get to the, the home page, the welcome page here. Uh, and the one item of interest here is the backup manager. So click that and you'll be presented with a little backup menu. Currently I have no backups here but if I had earlier backups they would all show here and as a list. There could also be automatic backups that the system creates once a night. I create mine around midnight between midnight and 2 a.m. for all the websites so there should be between five and seven snapshots that, go, that, that are created once a day automatically. Now mine are totally empty. So I'm going to create a manual backup now and these are the backups that you can create yourself as well. It's very easy to do. There's the backup button here. Let's click that. And we're presented with a little dialog here. The first box here, add a prefix to the backup name. That is just something like a file name. The file name gets created automatically but you can prefix it with something of your choice. So you could say um, uh, something like old website v1 for example comment section uh, you can 
you can delete all of this, but this is just a default thing that Plesk populates domain by J versus Lewis backup. Uh, I could call it before making scary changes. And we'll see where this comment pops up. We'll store this in the server repository. You could also store it on the FTP repository, which is a physically different server, so you can store the backup off-site. We're not going to cover that. And under backup content, you have two options here. You can say domain configuration or domain configuration and content. And we definitely want to select the second option because we want to archive everything. You can during the backup already say what you want to what you want to make a backup of all the content all the configuration and content without mail or just mail uh, we're going to archive everything because we can filter the same options in when we restore the backup so let's just click this and there's one last tick box here suspend domain until backup task is complete that's very fairly self explanatory it means during the backup, the website is not going to be available. That's, that's got pros and cons. If you have a website that only you are making changes on, then it doesn't really matter because you know, hey, there's a backup running. I'm not going to make changes during that time. But if a backup is created and somebody is making changes, then the backup is kind of you know half the old website and half the new website. So you can foresee all kinds of trouble there. Um, so if you want to be on the safe side, just tick that box. I'll leave it unticked for now. If you have a website where several co-authors could be making changes, then this is definitely worth ticking. But hey, we're going to leave it unticked for now, and all you do is click Backup. And what that's going to do now uh, is Plesk is going to uh, read out the database, zip all the content up, put it all into one XML file, and that is, that is what's saved on the server and accessible to you. Uh, this is just a small website, so I think as soon as I hit refresh, my backup is probably there. There we go. It's only 10.9 megabytes. But on larger installations, this can take between 2 and 10 minutes, um, depending on how busy your server is and how busy, how large your website is. And um, this is where that comment comes in that we've just uh, added here before making scary changes. The creation date and the time is automatically put in here. And that little green arrow here, this is if you want to download the backup to your local computer. If it's 10 megabytes or 100 megabytes, that's not really a big problem. But if your website runs into several gigabytes, then just be aware that that may take some time. So that was the backup process. Our website, of course, hasn't changed. It's still the same, the same layout, the same title, the same everything. So let's make a quick change here. So in the WordPress admin interface, I'll go under Appearance and Themes. And maybe I'll pick this one here, 2011. That looks very different. I'm also going to go under Settings, General. And instead of Old Website, I'm going to call this my New Website. And here I'll just go New Tagline. I'll save the changes. And then I'll make one more change and under posts, I'm going to get rid of my picture post here. So put that in the trash. So there's only one post left, hello world. And if I refresh my front page, then I'll see I've got a completely different website. Picture post is gone, theme has changed, new website, new tagline, this is all changed. Imagine those were changes you didn't like and you want to restore that website to an earlier point in time. Well, lucky for us, we've just made one, so let's cover how to restore that website next. So we'll go back into the Plesk panel, into the Backup Manager, just like I showed you before. Let's go right back to the beginning so we can show that. This is the page that gets shown after you log in. So you hit the Backup Manager. And here's a list of backups. We only have one backup, and it's really easy to bring that back. All you do is you click on that link, or click on that backup. This brings you up with uh, two dialog options, actually. The first one is this one. It describes the backup in detail, what the backup was called, how big it is, who made it, when it was made. And it also tells you what this contains. So it contains the configuration and the content. Now we can pick what we'd like to restore. So we want to pick the domain configuration. 
the virtual host content and we want to recreate all our databases. So we're going to bring all that back. Mail is something you can leave unchecked if you don't want to bring that back because imagine you've, uh, you, you bring back a backup from six months ago. Obviously you've received more mail since then I would imagine so you don't want to restore the mail so mail is untouched but if you also want to restore mail to, for disaster recovery or because um, this was just a change from five minutes ago that's cool you can tick that but I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna not tick that right now just like when we created a backup we also have the option to suspend the domain while the backup is restored so I'm gonna leave that untouched because no one's doing anything on that website and the last field here is when restoration task is completed, send notification email. So if you have a larger backup that could take 20 minutes to restore, you can just put your email address in here and watch your iPhone and see when you receive an email. Then you can go and, uh, and, and see your backup brought back to life. I'm going to leave that because this is only going to take two seconds here. So hit restore and be presented with yet another dialog box in which Plesk is asking you, hey, what happens if I receive conflicts, if I have files that are uh, already on the file system and I'm going to bring it back from the backup, what do you want me to do? So the top option here, use configuration and data from backup, means that everything from the backup overrides whatever's currently on your website. That is usually what you want to do if you're bringing, up, if you're bringing back a website that, that you want to completely overwrite. But you have two other options here. If you have file conflicts, do not restore, or use the configuration from the current system and the data from the backup. So those are options you have. I'm going to leave the first one here and hit next. This brings up this dialog here, which looks like it would automatically refresh once the website has been restored. That is not the case, sadly, even though it looks like it. You have to manually click the refresh button every so often and, and just see if the website's being brought back. So this takes a minute or two, depending on the size of your backup. But at one point, if the website has been successfully restored, then you should see a green bar that tells you just that. Restoration of the backup was has completed. And you can go and close this message because we've now brought the backup back. Now let's check out if that's true or not. Let's go to the front end of WordPress here uh, and hit refresh so we can see the changes. And there we go. We're back on the old website with the old theme. It's brought the old post back. It's brought the old website title and the old tagline back. And the new changes that I've just made have been overwritten. That's exactly what we expect. And in the back end, ex exactly the same story. So under settings general, you have your old title back and under posts, you'll find all the old posts that you may have deleted. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. This was the WP Guru podcast. I'm Jabez Lewis. Join me next time.